Welcome to this episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. Today I want to talk about what to do if you spook a buck. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Code of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, and Hoyt. How you react to a spooked buck really comes down to how badly he was spooked and how he was spooked. So I'm going to use the human analogy. So let's say that you are walking down the sidewalk and uh, a rabbit or a dog jumps out of a bush. And it's, it's nighttime, it's kind of like you're being careful, you know, it's like a, you know, a buck out on the prowl. He's always being careful. You know, a, a raccoon jumps out of a bush next to the sidewalk and you, you know, you're like, oh no, man, that's no good. So you, you, you run off and you, you realize, oh, it was just a raccoon. So, you know, you're, next time through there, you might be a little bit careful, like, oh, I don't know if, you know, if that raccoon's going to come out again. Um, but you're not going to stop using that sidewalk. But let's say you're walking down that sidewalk and a guy with a black mask on his face and a knife jumps out of the bush and comes towards you. Uh, you're going to probably react almost the same way you did with the raccoon initially. But uh, the way that you you uh, assess that and the way that you uh, change your behavior is going to be completely different. You're not going back down that sidewalk again for a really long time. You might drive past it in your car, you might do a few more things because it's on your route. I mean you want to use that. That's the quickest way between you know where you live and where you work or where you shop or whatever. It's the same thing with the deer. I mean he's got a trail that he really wants to use but if he gets really scared there in an identifiable life and death kind of a, of a scare. Um, that's gonna be completely different than if he picks up a little human scent, you know, when he's walking in. Or uh, maybe even a sound that doesn't quite sit with him, that spooks him. Um, so keep that in mind. He's, he's gonna make some very large scale behavioral changes if the scare is severe enough. So what we're really doing is ranking the level of scare. Uh, more so than we are doing anything else related to the deer behavior because how oh, oh boy Bentley's walking through this pond over here that's pretty nasty I better show you that so that's why we call them the stinky brothers no further explanation required uh, getting back on topic here, so we're, we're evaluating the amount of scare that we gave the deer, and then I can come back and create a little scale of what I think, you know, how long they're going to, you know, they're going to wait before they go back to normal movement based on that type of scare. So let's just say it's incidental contact with a human in an area where humans are normal, like let's say you're walking along a county road and the buck you're hunting is standing in the cover just inside the road ditch and he sees you and he runs off. Uh, that's a low scare, very low level scare. Uh, let's say you're sneaking into your hunting spot and the wind is in your favor but you bump him and he, he jumps up and he runs off and he stops and he looks around trying to figure out exactly what happens happened and then he walks off kind of you know stiff-legged and fast that's a little bit different because now you've taken it to him in an area where human activity is not as normal but in this case he didn't even figure out that it was a person he just knew something was wrong so now let's take the same scenario but now he sees you you're sneaking through there and you can you know you come past him at fairly close range you're sneaking along his eyes pop wide open you can just see the how startled he is and off he goes, that's a higher level again because now he knows it was a person. And he sees us as a threat. Um, it's pretty rare that you can be in an environment where they become so desensitized to people that they don't see us as a threat. Some of the most urban areas maybe, but um, generally that's, if a deer encounters a person, uh, they're not happy. Uh, so now let's take the level of, of scare uh, one layer deeper and let's say that he sees and smells you know obviously the more senses they engage uh, but now let's say that they actually see you in the tree 
he's walking past and he's being careful and he just happens to catch you out of the corner of his eye up in the tree and he locks and you can see him trying to figure out what it is and then that moment of realization because he's had bad experiences with people in trees. Now he bolts out of there. I mean he's uh, he's not bounding off. I mean he's gone. Um, well let's go back one. Let's just say that he bounds off. He doesn't recognize exactly what you are. He knows it's not quite right. He bounds off. He stops. Then he blows and he you know raises his tail and off he goes. But let's say that he recognizes the danger and he just leaves the area immediately on a dead bolt. Um, that's a, a buck that's going to remember that incident a lot more than one that's trying to sort it out and bounds off. So his reaction, when he's really afraid, he's gone. So let's say that you he comes past the tree and you shoot at him and he hears the arrow go whizzing by and you missed him. Um, he may just jump and trot you know 15 yards and go right back to you know, following the trail again. Uh, that's no big deal. That deer, that's not a spook. But let's say that you grunt to stop him. He looks up. He sees you in the tree. You take the shot and he ducks the string and you miss him high. Uh, that's completely different. Now, that missed buck identifies, again, that human element or at least something very dangerous related to that location. He knows that that thing coming toward him um, came from that tree and he doesn't appreciate that. Um, so now we'll go one layer deeper and let's say that you stop him and you actually hit him but you make a flesh wound you know high in the hump and that deer is not going to be any worse to wear for it. Uh, he, he rips out of there you know leaves flying um, you know you go in there you go in there and blood trail and, and you know you, you verify that it was you know a, a superficial wound um, you know, how does that deer react? Uh, completely different again when he's in that area. Uh, those are probably the full range. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we can go back now and we can start putting, like, how long should you wait? Should you move to a new spot? Those kinds of, of answers related to the, you know, the different levels of scare. So let's do the, the low level scare, you know, where the deer bumps into you in an area that's more or less, you know, human activity is kind of normal. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I'd go, you know, unless you ran the opposite direction from where you were going to go hunt him, and that was the only deer you're after, I would just keep going. I would just go hunt because he doesn't relate what happened right there with uh, anything that's going to happen back in the timber. He just knows that once in a while people go past and, you know, it's just part of his life. Uh, that's not any kind of a game changer. Now let's say that you're sneaking in, you bust the buck out of his bed. He doesn't know it was a person. He knows something was, you know, suspicious. I wouldn't change anything. In fact, I'd probably still hunt him that day, but I definitely wouldn't worry about in the future. I might change the route that I take to get to the tree because that obviously didn't work, but I wouldn't stop hunting him in that area because again, he didn't attribute enough scare. You know, you were the raccoon that jumped out of the bushes on the sidewalk. You weren't the madman with the knife. Um, so now let's keep ratcheting it up. Now he sees you in the tree. He doesn't quite know what it is. You know it's not quite right. Um, he's going to be suspicious there for a little while, probably. Um, I've seen him, especially during the rut, be so you know, clueless that they'll, they'll still use the same trail the next day. That's not a huge deal. I would not stop hunting that spot. I wouldn't even uh, probably take a break from it. Uh, but now... Let's get into those areas where he's identified real risk. And that is when he knows that there's a person there, you know, with bad intent. And uh, in those situations, it doesn't do any good to keep hunting a spot that the buck you're hunting has identified as danger. Uh, I killed a deer two seasons ago. I spooked him from the tree. Uh, he didn't know exactly where the scent came from. He had to have smelled, he had to have smelled me because it, it was wet out and he snuck in behind me. He was only 15 yards away. I mean, uh, I, you know, I kicked myself for a really long time on that one, but uh, how I let him sneak in on me. But then he snorted and ran out to 40 and stopped. And he was looking all around 
trying to figure out exactly what happened there. And then he snorted again and, and ran off. Well, he didn't know where I was. He just smelled human scent. He just got a hit of it and reacted to it. Um, had he really locked in on me in the tree, I probably wouldn't have hunted that spot again. But I did kill him out of that same tree. I think it was 12 days later, uh, same buck. And he wasn't using the trail, but he was in that area. You know, he was moving through that area and, and uh, he was following a doe. Whether he would have come through there on his own, I think he would have because he lived on that ridge. You know, I think he just, you know, he was eventually going to come past that spot. But I think had he caught me in the tree specifically, not just a, a human scent, but if he'd identified that human scent as being me in that tree, I think I would have had to move to a different spot on that ridge, you know, the other side of the ridge or do something different there. So I, I kind of took from his reaction my own behavior of, of you know, how I was going to hunt him. I just I kept hunting him in that tree. Uh, and eventually it paid off. But let's say that you hit the buck and uh, he knew that you were there. You grinded, stopped him. He looked up at you. You shot, uh, all that stuff. Um, I wouldn't hunt that spot again. Um, I would keep hunting that area you know, because that buck is still going to be in the area he may be more cautious, he may be a little bit more nocturnal, but he's just gonna move to a different part of his range. He's not gonna leave the area completely. Um, so I would just, I would abandon that spot probably for the rest of the season, but I'd keep hunting that buck somewhere else. So anytime you're assessing what to do after you spook a buck, you have to assess how spooked he was. And then you can answer that question. Well, I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you right back here again in the future for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.